What's up, everybody? Happy Monday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. Hope you all had a great weekend. Um, Getting into this episode of GH, listen, I don't understand why Dante keep wasting his time. I understand, you know, he feel like I got to get my brother and my dad back together, get them on the same page. It, it ain't going to happen, bro. It, it ain't going to happen. Dante need to just stop wasting his time with Tweedledee and Tweedledum and go about his business and focus on him and Sam and they business. Leave leave these two fools. Let them duke it out and cancel each other out if that's the case. I wouldn't be wasting my time. Drew Drew tried to talk to Michael. He tried to talk to Sonny. Dante done tried to talk to Michael. He tried to talk to Sonny. They're both stubborn. Stubborn mules. So why keep wasting your time? Because I wouldn't be wasting my good breath. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, I would not waste my good doggone breath on two people that want to be stubborn asses. I'm just saying. Like, Sonny talking about, well, I'm not going to be bullied out of here. I ain't going to be chased out of here. And Michael talking about, oh, I ain't going to be chased out of here. They sound like, like two children. Two damn kids. Grow up. Ain't none of y'all got to be chased out of nowhere. Y'all both there, you know, to see people or whatever. And, you know, to support the kids and stuff like that. That's what y'all are there for. So be there for the kids. It ain't about y'all ego. Take the ego out the door. You know what I'm saying? Check check your egos at the door. Take it out of the equation. And, you know, focus on what you're there for. Michael wants to sit there and be petty. Oh, Willow doesn't need anything from you. All the man did was send flowers. And Michael talking about, oh, he just did that. He only did that to get to me. I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt he did that to get to you. I highly doubt it. Like, Michael, he need to go sit down. I understand his frustrations with Sonny, but it's like you, he taking it a bit too far in my book. Like, I feel like he he's going too, too far with it. Like, it's not that deep. Like, you got a right to be angry or whatnot, but you you doing a bit much, bro. Um, and Dante was pretty much trying to tell Sonny, oh, you need to go talk to Michael. There's no point in Sonny going to talk to Michael. He's already tried more than once to talk to Michael. And I feel like, Unless Sonny's going to say something that Michael wants to hear, there's no point. It's a waste of time and Sonny even approaching Michael at this point. And Sonny, he basically felt like, you know what? I'm done talking. He, Sonny was like, shit, Michael need to come talk to me. Why do I got to make the first move? He was like, I've already tried to talk to him, whatever. He don't want to listen, so he need to come talk to me and apologize. Um, I get where Sonny coming from. As the parent and stuff like that, you know, even if your kid is grown, you're not going to stand there and just allow your kid. You're only going to take but so much disrespect. And Mike and Michael has been disrespectful. You know, like I said, I understand Michael's frustrations with Sonny and his anger, but he has taken things a bit too far now. Um, and Sonny pretty much felt like Dante was kind of warning him. Like, oh, you know, are you is that cold for like watch my back or something? Because he was like, if Michael's playing or something, what, what what is he playing? Oh, he playing or something, and Sonny better be on alert. <laughs> um, But, yeah, like I was saying, the only way Michael is going to attempt to reconcile with Sonny is if Sonny pretty much does whatever Michael wants him to do or say whatever Michael wants him to say. If Michael wants him to be done with Nina, then that's what he wants to hear at this point from Sonny, that Sonny's done with Nina. Um. And obviously, Sonny's not going to say that. He's not going to do whatever Sonny, whatever Michael wants him to do. They they just being totally stubborn towards each other at this point. Um, and they need to get it together. So anyway, moving on from that, speaking of getting it together, um, Michael and Drew finally talked to Ned about his place at ELQ. Um, they offered him a COO position. Ned wasn't here for it, and I don't blame him. COO is pretty much second in command at a company, and, you know, it's a good position or whatever, but we all know Ned wasn't going to take that. Ned is, no, he's not going to take no secondary position because he knows what it is. That is a position that has no real say-so. Um, and Ned felt like it's a position that there's no creative thinking there, you know? And not only that, but they were talking about bringing on a um, secondary COO or whatever to help with the media part because, you know, Ned is not big on media or whatever. So they want to bring somebody in with more experience with that. So, yeah, Ned was like, yeah, I, I, he said, yeah, I'll, I'll consider it. I'll think about it and get back to you. Ned ain't going to take it. Even Drew felt like that didn't go over too well. <laughs> like because he knew 
Ned ain't going to take that foolishness. Ned wants a real position within the company. He wants a voice at the company. You know what I'm saying? He wants a say. You know, COO doesn't really have a say. And I know Ned not going to take it. So, of course, Valentine called him and was like, listen, we need to talk. Um, the only way I could, like I said, the only way I could see Valentine and Ned partnering up is if it's a co-CEO kind of deal. At least that way, Ned will have a say in the company, you know, as co-CEO. That's the only way I could see them partnering up. Ned is not going to take anything other than that. Um, and I totally feel Ned on that. I totally get where he's coming from. But at the same time, you can't trust somebody like Valentin. You know, Valentin has been doing a good job with the LQ, but, you know, with this Victor mess going on, I wouldn't trust him. Not completely. Um, so moving on from that, speaking of Valentin, I told listen, Felicia is me as a friend. As a friend, I totally get where Felicia was coming from. She was grilling the hell out of Valentin because I'm that friend. You know what I'm saying? Like, what is your intentions with my bestie? That's what I want to know. What is your intentions with my bestie? What are your, you know, what are your plans? Like, are you planning on wasting my best friend time? Like, you know, <laughs> Felicia was getting in his ass and I like it. Um, Because she ain't got time for that. She was like, listen, she basically told Valentine, step up, do better or leave Anna alone. I felt that because as a friend, I, I would do the same thing. Like, don't waste my best friend time. Like, we got people to meet, things to do, thought and to do. We ain't got time for you to waste our time or waste, you know, my friend time. Like, we ain't got time for all that. <laughs> That's how I would be. Like, listen, we, we we got people to meet. We got things to do. So what, what type of time are you on? You know what I mean? I do feel like Valentin definitely is into Anna. But he got his hands full right now with ELQ, with whatever he got going on with Victor. And of course, you know, that played into it because Anna got a phone call from one of the agents. So apparently they got enough evidence to lock Jennifer Smith ass up for the rest of her life. Um, even though Anna doesn't believe she did it, it's not really much Anna could do unless she finds some type of proof that can exonerate her. Um, and Valentine told my, oh, I may be able to help you or whatever. I'm like, Valentine, unless you're going to tell Anna the truth, I don't think you can help her. <laughs> like hopefully he gonna fill her in and clue her in on what's been going on with him and victor like what he's been doing you know that's the only way to help jennifer out of this mess honestly i wouldn't even help jennifer i let that ass rock i'm just saying like all the shenanigans jennifer done pulled over the years i would let her sit in that prison you would just have to sit up in there and and eat jello for the rest of your life <laughs> Listen, I, I, I can't afford for you to get out of prison and start coming back in here wreaking havoc on everybody's life. Like, absolutely not. Um, but, you know, Anna, she can't let no no innocent person, well, innocent of this particular crime, sit up in jail. I can, but she could. So <laughs> that's where we differ. Um, and I get it. So anyway, moving on from that, um, Leo did an amazing job, you know, reciting his poem. I like how... He was able, you know, even though he was nervous when he saw all the people in the crowd, once he saw Chase, he got more comfortable and stuff like that. I like it. You know, he did a good job and I'm glad him and Chase, you know, he's comfortable with Chase because um, that may be his new brother-in-law soon. If, and that's a big if, if BLQ and Chase can finally get it together, like this slow burn for them to become a couple is nice and all, but I need some movement. Like I need some tongues touching clothes being ripped off some i love you's i do's I, I need something going on with them like asap like let's go we we've been playing around with them long enough i i need to know like what's 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 going on between the two <laughs> like we need we need to get a move on with this like do i need to hire a mariachi band like what, what we got to do to facilitate this here like let's let's come on um so anyway moving on from that um I like Ava and Trina's relationship and whatnot, but my thing is Avery got a dance recital going on right now. Sonny's there. Where the heck, why is Ava not at the dance recital? I understand she won't be there for Trina, but you know, you do have a young child that's dancing right now. That's where you need to be. You can help Trina later. Um, but Trina's in another crisis at the moment because now her school is talking about expelling her. They sent her documentation talking about she got to respond to it within 10 days. I'm like, what? See, this is that BS that I'm talking about. Trina need to go over to Windermere and knock Esme the hell out. She need to slap the daylights out that girl. Like, that girl got you a 
police record right now. She got you on trial. You could be going to jail for, for years. Now they're talking about kicking you out of school. All because of, behind what this girl done did. She deserve a beat down. I'm not talking about just any old beat down. She need an old school, old fashioned Joe Jackson ass whooping. <laughs> like I'm talking about going to the next door neighbor yard, get cutting a switch. The biggest switch you could find, taking all the leaves off and wearing that ass out. That's the kind of ass whooping that girl need. Because you ain't about to have me sitting up in prison, number one. Number two, you about to have me expelled out of school? No, I'm, I'm going to beat that ass. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a whoop you. That's what Trina need to do at this moment. Because you can't let this just go. And you know, I'm happy that Portia bumped into Spencer. Because Spencer was like, oh, how's Trina doing and stuff? I love how Portia lit into his ass. I love it. Because even though he's trying to help exonerate Trina, at the end of the day, him and Esme are the big causes of all this mess. Ever since Trina got involved with this boy, her life has went from this to this. Ever since she met them. I don't blame Portia for going off because her daughter has such a bright future. And now look at it. Her future is looking very bleak. I think any parent with a grain of salt would have went off on him. They probably would have slapped the holy piss out of him by now, too. Like, you sitting there looking all, all pitiful and stuff, but I, I agree with everything Portia said. Because when Spencer was guilty of his crime, his family bought him out of that. He spent 30 days at Spring Ridge for crying out loud. Like, dude, you went to a Martha Stewart jail. This girl is looking at real jail time, like real prison time. Like, no joke. Like, not even 30 days. Like, she's looking at some years. You know what I mean? So, I don't blame Portia for going off. And, you know, Trina, at this point, she was through with um with, with Spencer and his little lame-ass excuses. Oh, I didn't mean for this to happen. I agree. You never mean for anything to happen, but it still do. Fool. Um, like, somebody just need to get, somebody need to get Esme. So I need to take her down. In the back of my mind, her whole conversation with um Nicholas, she was she was happy that Spencer couldn't do the whole picnic stuff with her and all that. Like he came with an excuse not to do the picnic with her. And she was happy about it because it gave her time alone with Nicholas, of course, to where she could work her magic and try to seduce him. And it looked like it's working. You know, she's talking about, oh, you know, I can't believe, you know, Ava can't see what a great man she has and what he does to protect family and like, just laying it on thick as she can do. Um, and Nicholas is obviously looking like he buying it. But a part of me feels like in the back of my mind, I'm holding out hope that deep down he's conniving enough to play her. Like, I really am hoping that, that Nicholas is playing the shit out of her right about now. I'm hoping so. I'm like, Nicholas, you don't went up against the best of the best manipulators and came out a bit unscathed. You mean to tell me you can't get past this little itty bitty girl and her little trifling behind? Nicholas, wake up and smell the cheap Folgers. Get her. Like, put that little girl in her place. Don't don't try to sleep with her. Don't you do it. Try to find some way to get her to slip up. And I hope you record in every conversation they have. Hopefully, Nicholas is playing her. Like, deep down, I'm praying that that's what he's doing. I'm praying for it. So, anyway, moving on from that. Um... I love the scene between Stella and Curtis. Like, they finally got down to the truth um, that Stella knew that um, Marshall faked his death. And, you know, apparently Curtis' mother knew about it, too. But she said she didn't find out. Stella didn't find out until after he had already left the first time. That's when Curtis's mother told her that, you know, they agreed that he would fake his death and leave. Um... I, I totally understand why Curtis was upset with Stella. Because, you know, this whole time she been sitting on this hot piece of gossip. <laughs> it made him think that his father was dead. Like, you sitting on all this tea and you ain't spill it not once. Even though them boys were sitting there with pain on their face. I don't blame him for being angry with her. But at the same time, I'm glad that he did forgive her, though. You know, but um, now he feels like he needs to find Marshall to fill in the gaps. Like, why did he need to pretend? You know what I mean? I couldn't believe that the mama knew about it, you know? Um, well, I can believe it, but I can't. Um, my whole thing is, though, if Curtis, even if Curtis finds Marshall, it's like, who's to say Marshall is going to tell him the real reason he left? 
Maybe he had like some mental health Ill issues that he needed to deal with and he, you know, he didn't want to be around the kids. Maybe it was a dangerous type of mental health, you know, um, and he just didn't want to bring that kind of pain on his family or whatever, or he didn't know um, if he would attack the family or not, you know, like who knows like what was going on with him. But I don't I don't know, man, maybe maybe he'll tell Curtis the truth this time around. Maybe he won't. Um, I don't know, you know, cause Marshall, he keeps things close to the vest. You know what I mean? Like the whole time he was in town, he didn't want to tell Curtis nothing. Like he just kept telling Curtis to leave it alone, leave it alone. And he made it abundantly clear to Curtis. He was like, listen, whatever is not explained in that police file, I'm not going to tell you. So I just felt like it might be a waste of Curtis's time to go find him because you still might not get any information from him. Even if you do confront him and be like, you know, Stella told me everything and this, that, and the third, he still might not tell you. Um, and I think it's about time after 40 some odd years, Marshall need to, you know, check himself and just tell his son what the hell was going on back then. I feel like Curtis need to know he deserved to know after 40 some odd years, like tell that boy what's going on. Um, and stop playing these little stupid games. You know, let's put this to rest, finally. Um, anyway, that was pretty much the whole episode. Um, hit the comment section, let me know what y'all thought, and I will see you all later. Have a great day. Peace.